Steve Kerr called out Stephen Curry for a defensive lapse when he allowed a backdoor cut on Precious Achua in the third quarter. Steph responded by locking in to hit game-sealing daggers while not making another mistake on the other end. After improving their home record to 19-6, Golden State's now just a single game back of the New Orleans Pelicans for home court advantage in the first round of 2023's playoffs. While they've mostly had an incredibly rocky campaign, the dubs 1-15, through 15, including the coaching staff, have treated these last few outings with a lot more conviction. Let's step back to first realize that winning a fifth championship in under a decade is obviously an extremely tall task. In addition to Steph's 35 points and 11 assists, Dante DiVincenzo had 11 dimes as well to go along with just one turnover. Stay tuned for perspective from both the Warriors and Raptors standpoints. Right quick, subscribe and turn on notifications because if more of the 12% of you watching were subbed, we'd achieve the grand milestone of 100k. So splash that sub box like your Steph Curry with the shop boy for the YouTube algorithm. Go to the gram to help a compadre out by following at Hoops. Let's get back to the content. This punch back door type set with Steph zigzagging off the ball, stopping on a dime, and heavily baiting perimeter cut is elusive enough movement to freeze the mere 21 year old Barnes as he gets the back door cut. It was play sets like those, more of which we'll get to later on in this video, that were flowing all night long for the dubs. But as I said before this one, this was going to be conflicting for me personally as a Raps fan in Toronto, and also considering the fact that the dubs have elevated into my second team, given I'm a member of Dubs Nation, despite the Raptors inspiring and continuing to inspire my love for the game, Thursday night was tough to watch. However, no matter who I was cheering for throughout the night, I was going hard for those Kaminga 3s by the way, but it felt like Golden State's playoff type approach to the game, specifically down the stretch, was inevitably going to break through. Steph, along with a flawless free agent pickup in an elite rebounding and facilitating guard Dante DiVincenzo, the getting more consistent, sweet stroke, and uber-athletic force of Jonathan Kaminga, and of course, who had one of his best games of the season, all gave the dubs exactly what they needed to exact partial revenge on Rivals Week for their 2019 Finals loss. On automatic, not auto portomatic, but a similar type vibe to what OPJ did against Phoenix last year, Kaminga poured in four straight three pointers to end the third quarter. This kid's release is seemingly easy for him to time up at least when he's attempting catch and shoots that is. JK made some history in this one, as no one in the play-by-play -play era has more threes on 100% field goal percentage in the last three minutes of any quarter in any game. I hope to see that keep up from a player I've been critical of, but at one point labeled as having superstar potential, good on you, John. Quickly, from a Raptor fan's perspective, and first and foremost, prayers to OG Ananobi on a swift recovery after a scary looking fall. Nick Nurse was a really good coach in 2019. He was fantastic in the bubble. Since then, in 2021, 21 22, and now 22 23, he's really struggled to build up this team's chemistry, fracturing his relationship with Pascal Siakam in that first year following the bubble. As I've mentioned before, and what cost them against Golden State, Nick Nurse's switch slash trap heavy scheming allowed the Warriors to dramatically exploit those coverages with downhill ravages leading to a blistering 62 points in the paint for the dubs. That was Golden State's second highest total on the season for them in terms of points in the paint. This next bit of info isn't good news if you're a Nick Nurse stan. 40 assists equals great ball movement equals everybody's happy so I'm happy. My raps have been taking L's badly since the bubble, albeit after a decent year last season, but in terms of W's, I don't usually look back at my own, but I'm gonna keep stating how right I was about the pickup of Dante DiVincenzo this past offseason. As I'll say again, like we looked at in countless videos last summer, this man's providing a massive impact in all areas, which perfectly complements slash fits in with what this warrior system is all about. That being playing with tempo and obviously letting fly of his many triples as possible, whether off the dribble, in transition, or typical spot-ups after getting pristine high-low swing-swing motion with exceptional off-ball movement to top it off. DiVincenzo played all 12 minutes in the fourth against both Memphis and Toronto, being a combined plus 16 in these last two games against pretty solid opponents. 
Draymond Green's finishing at the bucket has been elite this year. He's been shocking with his shot from distance, but maybe his most mysterious bit of impact, aside from nearly smushing Deuce Tatum, of course, in a video that became the most viewed vid on all of social media, came with firstly this Bluetooth pass, but also this optical illusion where he simultaneously whips a shoe and a kickout pass to Clay. I digress though, and aside from all the beautiful early offense they were manufacturing after relentlessly pushing the pace in transition, the most crucially executed play of the night came out of a nastily innovative half-court set, where after DiVincenzo takes it up, the Warriors run Horn Chicago, which has since gone from a pass from the point guard to the big man in their 2019 playbook into a now guard-to-guard -guard pass, leading directly into a double screen. Obviously, Steph's greatest ever three-point stroke requires only an inch of space, but from this picture, you can see GTJ actually fouls him, and this shot generally just seems impossible. Fake video where he made six consecutive shots from full court or not, I personally think it's fake like Kobe jumping over the car back in the day, but shots like the one we just looked at against Gary show you why we appreciate the shooting prowess of this man so often on this channel. The Warriors offense found a dominant flow primarily down the stretch, but it was, to be fair, executing well essentially for the entire night. And regarding their defense, after the opening frame where Scotty Barnes was resembling Giannis and my Raptors were holding their own, conflictingly, my second team in the dubs clamped down and aside from the first, held the Raptors to just 23 points when it mattered most in the fourth. Another masterclass in the record books with style points for Stephen Curry displayed there are quite simply levels to this, and while on the other side, while I love him at heart for winning me a chip, Fred Van Vliet thinks he's worth 130 million. You're not that guy, pal, trust me. You're not that guy. Fact of the matter is though, if the Raptors agree to those terms, here's why they've become a poorly managed organization in that case. Van Vliet's 39.4% field goal percentage is an NBA fourth worst just ahead of Detroit's Killian Hayes. It's facts like that one, which make me not want to show up for Raptor games, which I haven't in a month and a half. Nevertheless, the Raps aren't doing anything, and the chemistry in their front office between Masai and Bobby Webster has been off since the Bay Area Finals matchup, as of course Kawhi went home, and other than an amazing pickup in Gary Trent Jr., to be fair, nothing other than that has happened for this Raps front office since then, which is why I'm ready to fully lock in on being the best member of Dubs Nation I can possibly be. Golden State's will to win is looking a tad bit better, and if they keep feeding it to Steph whenever he wants, they'll be in for what I'm right here on the record predicting will be a historic second half of the season, if the vibes can maintain themselves, that is. What's intrigued you the most over the last two games versus Memphis and Toronto? Get on the Community Speaks board and compete for merch with your competitive take down below. Today's commenter shoutout goes to Chow Nervousar, who says regarding Joel's all-star starter status, quote, they mad they can't guard him, can't convince me otherwise. How is the guy who's number two in MVP voting, leading the league in scoring, and second in the East, not a starter? Some of y'all look really goofy. Chow, I couldn't agree with you more, bud, as we looked at last video. Thanks for competing in Community Speaks. Thanks for watching.